Thank you, Madam Speaker. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, my honourable colleague from Essex who just spoke uh, so passionately and powerfully before me. Thank you for sharing his experience and his service. Uh, it's a tough act to follow that. Um, Madam Speaker, firefighters risk their lives every day to protect our communities. They have our backs when we need it most. And in turn, we have a responsibility to take care of Canada's firefighters. Cancer is an epidemic in Canada's fire service and by far the leading cause of line of duty death. New Democrats stand with firefighters in the battle to extinguish occupational cancer and in fact, all occupational hazards that they face. We must take immediate action to reduce the risk of cancer for Canadian firefighters through improved awareness, prevention, screening and treatment. And so this bill has our hearty support. Now, Bill C-224 provides for the development of a national framework designed to raise awareness of cancers linked to firefighting and to support improved access for firefighters to cancer prevention and treatment. And if I might at this moment, just take uh, a brief moment to comment on my Bloc Québécois colleagues' comments. Having a national framework is not only constitutional, but it's required in this country, as I'll point out, and there is no barrier whatsoever nor should we as parliamentarians let any barrier get in the way of taking measures that save lives and protect firefighters. Of course, this bill also designates the month of January in each year as Firefighter Cancer Awareness Month. Now the national framework does a number of things, but it must include measures to do the following, explain the link between firefighting and certain types of cancer, identify the training, education and guidance needs of healthcare and other professionals related to the prevention and treatment, of cancers linked to firefighting, provide for firefighters across Canada to be regularly screened for cancers linked to firefighting, promote research and improve data collection, promote information and knowledge sharing, and establish national standards to recognize cancers linked to firefighting as occupational diseases. Now, by way of background, Madam Speaker, occupational cancer is now the leading cause of death among firefighters. Firefighters, we know, are regularly exposed to concentrated carcinogens in the air, soot, and tar at a fire ground. A recent study from the University of the Fraser Valley, which drew on a decade of data from worker compensation boards, found that 86% of all firefighter workplace fatality claims were due to cancer, with an annual rate of a shocking 50 fatalities per 100,000 firefighters. Firefighters are killed by a cancer at a rate about three times higher than the general population. And cancer rates among firefighters increase dramatically with age, with the 35 to 39 year age group accounting for only 1% of workplace fatal cancer claims among firefighters, but the 60 to 64 year group accounting for 17%, while 65 and older make up nearly half the claims. Now, unfortunately, and this is why I think we need this bill so desperately, there's inconsistent recognition of occupational cancers across Canada. A firefighter's cancer may or may not be recognized as occupational, depending on the province or territory in which they live. According to the International Association of Firefighters Line of Duty Death Database, 408 Canadian IAFF members died in the line of duty as a result of occupational cancers during the 10-year period between 2012 and 2021. These were members whose cancers were formally accepted as job related by their respective provincial workers compensation boards, in most cases, by presumptive legislation. But the true number of firefighter cancer deaths among Canadian firefighters during that time frame is no doubt higher, considering that not all provinces and territories formally recognize all the same cancer types as occupational among firefighters. Quebec recently enacted presumptive legislation for its firefighters, becoming the last province to do so, but it only recognizes nine types of cancer as occupational when we know that there are double that at least. Now, I want to take a moment to speak about uh, what I consider to be the best uh, firefighters unit in the country. That's the Vancouver Firefighters Union, IAF F Local 18. And I want to give a shout out to some of the finest Canadians I've had the pleasure to know and work with. These include Gord Ditchburn, Rob Weeks, Lee Lax, Chris Coleman, and Dustin Bordady. These men are not only leaders in their workplace, they're not only some of the finest firefighters in the country, 
they're not only superb advocates and representatives of their firefighters as sisters and brothers in the labor movement, but they're just excellent human beings who give of themselves in every way, both in the community, in the workplace, and in the provincial legislature and House of Commons. And here's what they have uh, explained to me over the years. As IAFF Local 18 has been a leader in the promotion and achievement of cancer presumption legislation here in British Columbia. Now I wanna pause and say exactly what this legislation is. A presumption means if a professional or volunteer firefighter develops one of the listed cancers after a certain period of employment, it is presumed that the cancer arose from their employment. The firefighter is then eligible for workers' compensation benefits without having to provide evidence that the cancer is work-related, which can often be extra extraordinarily onerous and time-consuming, especially hard on a firefighter and their family at a time when they are battling cancer. Now, BC first recognized certain cancers as occupational diseases for firefighters in 2005, very much due to the leading work of Local 18. In 2017, the BC government moved forward with an amendment to the Firefighters Occupational Disease Regulation under the Workers' Compensation Act to add presumptions for breast cancer, prostate cancer, and multiple myeloma as occupational diseases for firefighters. At the time, cancer presumptions for firefighters were already recognized for the following. Brain, bladder, colorectal, kidney, ureter, testicular, lung, esophageal, non-Hodgins lymphoma, and leukemia. In 2019, the BC NDP government introduced Bill 18 to extend presumptive conditions for forest firefighters, Indigenous firefighters, and fire inspectors, allowing them to more easily claim coverage for work-related illnesses like cancer, heart disease, and mental health disorders. Now, this is an example, Madam Speaker, of what uh, labor and a very active and informed firefighters union working in concert with the government that is concerned about occupational health and safety can accomplish. And once again, this leading situation in British Columbia is not the reality for firefighters across this country. And that is why I think it is so critical that we provide a national framework to lead all provinces and territories to achieve the same kind of progress we're making BC, recognizing of course that the job is not done even here. Now, I want to just shift for a moment to something that is a very practical step that we can and should be taking. Uh, the NDP caucus wrote a letter to the Minister of Environment and Health uh, last year. And uh, what this letter did was it uh, expressed the IAFF's serious concerns over toxic chemical flame retardants in upholstered furniture and flammability testing standards for consumer products. Now, toxic chemicals are commonly used as flame retardants in a wide variety of household products, such as upholstered furniture. They threaten the environment, but more importantly, they affect the human body, causing numerous health problems, such as cancer. Firefighters are at a greater risk of harm from chemical flame retardants because they encounter them in a combusted state and accumulate higher levels of exposure over the course of their career. Now, the past chemicals management plan acknowledged the health risks posed by select chemical flame retardants and banned their manufacture, sale, import, and use. However, banning only certain classes of flame retardants opens the door to loopholes and only facilitates their continued loose use. Additionally, there are no regulations currently under the Canada Consumer Product Safety Act for residential upholstered furniture. This leaves the onus on industry to choose how to meet flammability requirements. The letter that we sent generated by the IAFF Local 18 called for firefighters to be included in the classification of vulnerable populations when assessing chemical safety, called for regulatory and risk management initiatives involving chemical assessments to consider occupational standards like fire and emergency services when evaluating chemical safety, called for the introduction of regulatory measures that will prevent industry from replacing toxic chemicals by other similar chemicals that are just as harmful called for a complete ban on the sale, manufacturing, import, and use of all chemicals that are used in flame retardants for upholstered furniture, given the toxic effects they have, not just on firefighters, but all Canadians. And it calls on the federal government to investigate standards, uh, concerns about open flame testing while considering the merits of smolder resisting standards and include the IAFF on any future testing or chemical management consultations. Madam Speaker, let's pass this bill, but let's also protect firefighters 
by enacting protection against cancer-causing flame retardants immediately. Thank you, Madam Speaker.